Interpreter is absolutely necessary. Ah, tonight's bag. Thank you, Mr. Redden. I'm just going down to the registry now. Very good, sir. See the ambassador's car is ready, will you? It's waiting outside, sir. for London, Miss Landring, Foreign Office and uh, Ministry of Defence. Have them sealed, if you please. Right, Mr Whittaker. The ambassador is just about to leave for the, for the reception. Uh, he wants a copy of that note on the tariff squabble. Oh, yes. Here it is. Thank you. Is it about time you packed up? Well, as soon as Mr Stroud's through in ciphers, there's a coded message coming through from London. Mm. Hmm. Special branch. Now, what the hell do we want with somebody like him? For the ambassador, it's urgent. Ah. All right, I'll take it up to him. Is everything ready for the strong room? Just about, yes. Uh, thanks. Ciphers. Kill the threshold beam for a few moments, will you stand? Okay. You're clear. And you can switch on Big Brother for the night. Picture on. Thanks, Dan. Oh, by the way, I just took a most curious signal. Someone who's paying us a visit. Maybe you'll have some idea what it's about. Yeah, I'll tell you when I come up. What's so mysterious about the message from London? Nice little ears you've got. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Mm. <laughs> All right, then, flap, flap. You were listening. Well? Mind if I filch one of your butch smokes? Help yourself. Mm. So, Desmond, they're sending out a Chief Inspector Jordan. Due here tomorrow, according to this signal. But they're uh, rather going it a bit, sir. You think so? Well, I would have hardly thought it necessary to send out someone as high-powered as this Jordan fellow. Well, I don't know. I mean, say, a very large sum of my private money has been stolen. Indeed, but uh, a policeman from the special branch. And we are one of the major embassies in Eastern Europe. That's just my point, sir. We are an embassy. Uh, so why not somebody from the Foreign Office Inspectorate? It's usual for such uh, matters to be dealt with by our own people. And after all, I mean, well, £10,000. It's hardly a petty theft. Don't you agree? Well, Redden isn't going to like it. Especially being an ex-Scotland Yard man. Oh, it's no reflection on Redden. He's just as baffled as we are. I mean to say, how could that blasted strong room have been forced? If only it could have been dealt with on the spot. Special branch, indeed. For the first time in 40 years, I've had an experience like this. Well, I'm very glad. Oh. Ah, Corporal, just the man. My backman forgot to polish my spurs. Give him a quick buff off, will you? Certainly, sir. Right now, okay. your personal box, sir. Uh, well, my, uh, my family's in publishing. My uh, brother runs the business. 
and the 10,000 was payment of royalties due for some time from this country. <clears throat> and then suddenly, much to my surprise, they paid up in cash direct to me. Come in. Ready when you are, sir. Oh, thank you so much, Jeremy. I say, be a good chap and collect Lady Chalice for me, will you? I'll meet you at the car. Right, sir. Uh, thank you, dear. Now, lay on a general staff meeting for tomorrow morning, will you? Indeed, sir. After this, we'll have to tell them about the theft and uh, what we may be in for. Indeed, sir. I uh, think it would be fairer, sir, before this uh, Bobby starts priding about. Quite, quite. Yes, Mr. Redden? Oh, Ambassador, this is Chief Inspector Jordan. Well, Chief Inspector, I'm afraid you've taken us rather by surprise. We didn't expect you until tomorrow. This signal about you has only just arrived. Yes, well, I caught an earlier flight. Would you like to check my credentials, sir? We'd have had you picked up at the airport, had we been informed. Well, it was easy enough to get a cab, and the thief has already had too much time for cover-up, hasn't he, Mr. Redden? <laughs> Inspector, this isn't England, you know, although I know technically it's part of it. This isn't some burgled hardware store. Well, well someone put his hand in the till all the same, didn't he? No, what Mr. Whitaker means is that all our employees have impeccable backgrounds. Oh, I'm sure they do, sir. Now, at my suggestion, Mr. Redden has only made the most discreet inquiries. And so it's been kept a secret between the three of you? Uh, more or less, yes, yes. When you see our security arrangements, Inspector, you'll realise what a tough one this is. I wonder if I might have a moment alone with you, sir. <laughs> well, I don't I'm know. afraid the Ambassador is due at an important reception. He's already running late. Let me take a moment, sir. <laughs> I see. Very well, Desmond. Perhaps you and Mr. Redden would wait outside for a minute. Thank you, sir. Well, this must be very upsetting for you, sir. It is indeed, Chief Inspector. Having to make up tales to my own colleagues about this damn money. However, I suppose I'm not the first ambassador to have to act as banker for spy money. No, sir. No. Sly money, I call it. Dirt money. Passed on and no questions asked. But you do have a man who deals with the other side here. Oh, yes, indeed. Our regular cloak and dagger merchant. Yes, I couldn't possibly afford to be connected with that side of it. No, he does all the contacting, the dishing out. And he is, of course, the only other man who knows about the funds. Yes, and I presume London have told you who he is. Oh, yes. And that he can't possibly break his cover in order to look into this. And that is why I'm here, sir. Good. I wonder if I might look at the files now. Mm. Certainly. Thank you, sir. As ambassador, I hate giving them to you. However necessary they may be to your inquiries. However, here you are. Now, um... Whitaker, you've already met, and Redden. Uh, Colonel Dysart is our military attaché. Miss Landring in registry. Mr. Stroud in ciphers. Ansel. No, you won't need him. He's our commercial attaché. He's back in the UK. And Warmby, British Council chap. Ambassador, I'm yes. very sorry to interrupt you, but it is 6.30. You really must yes, be Yes, indeed. I'm just coming. I say, will you excuse me? Oh, of course, sir. Yes. Thank you very much. Now, you uh, won't forget to be back in time for the recital, will you? Oh, good heavens, Desmond. Have I really got to sit through that? Well, Mr. Warmby especially wanted to be there. Young English girl, bright musical future. An evening of culture with the British Council. Mm -hmm. Well, wouldn't Lady Chalice do? She's frightfully keen on the cello. And you could stand in for me. If you wish, sir. I wish. See you later, Chief Inspector. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. Now, look here. I, I hardly think you have any right to go poking around this desk. Well, I have a lot of rights, sir. Oh, um, my room. Could you show me to my room? I will show you some quarters and an office. You've rather thrown us popping in off the street, you know, like this. Do you usually uh, put people in such difficulty? Look, I don't like being here, sir, and with a bit of luck, I hope to be in London by the weekend. Having traced the money, one presumes? Oh, of course, and the thief. Uh, only to local people employed by the embassy. Uh, most of them are home by six. And most of them are, sir. Excuse me. How many of the local people actually do duty here in the evenings? Only two or three. Perhaps a chef, a waiter, a handyman, or a cleaner. But none of them lives in there. And they're all searched by the marine on gate duty, if they're carrying anything more than an umbrella or a handbag. Mm, yes, of course. And the British residents, sir, are they searched as well? Not as a rule, no. Then I see. So it could have easily been one of the residents who removed the money from the embassy, then. Yes, I. I'm afraid so. As the ambassador said, uh, highly unpleasant business. Uh, well, this is an ordinary lock. There's no problem. 
names there at all. No problems, and at least a dozen people have keys. I see. Uh, Chief Inspector Jordan, this is Miss Sarah Landring, our archivist. Oh, yes, and the uh, third secretary. How do you do? How much more do you know? Quite a lot. Well, you certainly travel fast. Oh, Stride's been gossiping, has he? Hardly a breach of security. Why are you here, Inspector? Has someone stolen the banqueting room silver? Quite a lot of silver. Oh, I do hope you find it. Uh, Miss Landring, a uh, rather delicate matter. Inspector Jordan and myself have certain things to discuss. You'll know all about it later. We're all involved. Um, I'll put these things away in this strong room. There's no need for you to wait. Yes, Mr Whittaker. Um, we'll be meeting again, Inspector. I'm sure we will. Excuse me. Any good at tennis? Extremely. Backhand lobs a speciality, I bet. How did you guess? Bright young girl. On the verge, perhaps, of a more appropriate demeanour for her post. Yes, well, I was told the Foreign Service was modernising. There's a good deal of speculation, I no doubt, about the Embassy now, with your sudden undiplomatic arrival. Well, Fernie has very little to do with diplomacy. So tell me, what is this door here? That's the cipher room. Stroud's the cipher clerk. He's the only one with Whitehall clearance for that room. Top secret code. And this, of course, is the strong room here, is it? Uh, yes, indeed. That is the door we're concerned with. And tell me, how many people know the combination of this? Only three. Uh, the ambassador, myself, and Mr. Redden. One of us always has to be present when this door is opened and to authorise the cutting off of the warning beam uh, inside. That is the security camera, is it, there? Uh, that's the one, yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, oh. Um, <clears throat> Inspector Jordan, I don't Sir. think it right, even now, uh, to let you see the numbers I set these tumblers to. Oh, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Sure. Come on, Stank, give us the gen. Who's the bloke who's prowling around with Whitaker? You'll know soon enough, Corporal. Fascinating. Miss Landry. I thought our only entertainment was going to be tonight's recital. Lady Chalice, General Makovsky, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first in our series of musical evenings. Uh, six months ago, when Miss Prescott's studies under Pierre Valnick came to an end, the maestro said, I am cutting loose the strings of my most outstanding pupil, for she is ready to plunge her spike into the world's concert platforms <laughs> and make her music flow. <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, with Walter Locke and piano, Suzanne Prescott begins with the Sonata in A Major, Opus 69, by Beethoven. town tonight. Oh, well, change me mind. My bird's away. Oh? How come she phoned you today, then, local? If she rings again, I'm not here. Gone back to England, post it. Savvy? Gone wonky again, has it? Think interference? Yeah, it could be. Most likely that bleeding cello in there. <laughs> Music? It's enough to fuse a doorbell.
nervous to me. I shouldn't pry the things that don't concern you, old boy. Everyone, I'll leave this to us. Come on, Corporal. Ambassador! Ah, oh, there you are, Eden. I say, do turn off that frightful din, will you? You see, Inspector, I told you it couldn't be done. Thanks, I never... Uh... Tell me, what time did Jordan's signal arrive? Excuse me. Uh, came through Foreign Office Communications, 5 a.m. this morning. Well, what did he say? Uh, Jordan didn't send the signal. The embassy's first secretary did. Tartan it. It was quite a bit of chaos last night. What about it seems the chief inspector got down to business right away, tried to find out how the strong room was forced, and succeeded in alarming literally dozens of people and ruining a cello recital. Did the first secretary make an official complaint? It won't do much good. I'm glad Jordan's being thorough. Well, he always is. Indeed. Splendid idea of his to drop in unexpectedly. That was my idea, actually. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. King. The ambassador's tied up all day. Just not possible for you to see him. I see, and you just won't tell me what really happened last night. Look, sir, I've already I told you it's not possible. I'll see if I can find it. It's some years since I looked at it, but I think I've got to have to somewhere. My wife. Good morning, Ambassador. I was at the recital last night. Since the alarm went off, no one will tell me what really happened. Oh, this is Mr. King. He's one of our British press corps over here. You are. Uh, this Jordan, is Ministry of Works, how are you? Yes, indeed, we've uh, been going through some specifications about rebuilding and so on. And I'm afraid I was poking around and, um, well, I let off the alarm. Really? Perhaps we could get together. This would make an interesting feature. Rebuilding a corner of the Empire behind the Iron Curtain. I don't think the no, Ministry of I'm afraid Mr. George's on a very tight schedule and we're rather busy, so you'll please excuse us, Mr. Oh, King. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, well, that's kind of you, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you, Colonel Dysart. Thumb and index right hand are liable to be indistinct. A nasty lump of shrapnel in the Western Desert. Oh, and in case you're interested, I also had half my left foot shot away. Yes, I was aware of that, sir. A washed-up soldier. Only fit for military attaché. Small disablement pension on being bowler-hatted. <laughs> Ought to be a prime suspect, eh, Inspector? As one of the moles who work underground, I fancy there's only one way it could have been done. How? Nerve gas. Chinese, probably. Through the embassy air conditioning. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie Chan. You're welcome. Shall I show him the next one? No, wait a minute. Did you notice something that he did? He did all that, all that, absolutely automatically. Yes, that's true. I usually have to be shown. Yes, indeed. And of course, there's nothing in his file, but I'll tell you one thing. I swear that that man's had his fingerprints taken before. Do you take my picture as well? You make a very attractive one. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Landring. The long arm of Scotland Yard behind the Iron Curtain. Interesting situation. Though that's not what the First Secretary calls it. No, I'm sure he doesn't. Hello? They are speaking. Oh, damn. All right, I'll attend to it myself. Trouble at the gate. Believe it or not, in the middle of all this, a maid tried to walk out with a blanket under her coat. <laughs> Nights around here must be very cold. I'm sure Mr. Redden's happier handling that sort of thing. <laughs> now, tell me now, what do you, what do you feel? Oh, cigar. Let me light it for you. Tell me, what do you feel about all this? Well, we were all quite shaken to hear about the money. There were a lot of rumours before you tested the strong room, and now they're worse than ever. In what way? Well, no-one's likely to fall for the publishing royalties gag. Aren't they? 
It's a well-known fact this country never pays up. They even pinch pop songs and rename them. Well, I'm here to uh, find a fee for £10,000. And they didn't tell you it was money for spying? I'd like to know who told you that. No one. It's just a shrewd guess. See you at lunch, perhaps. Suddenly I'm starving. Oh, good morning. Mm. We haven't met. I'm warm there. British Council Bond. I'm terribly sorry I upset your musical evening. Well, you might have chosen a better moment, but not worry. I um, heard our alluring archivist just now. Clever girl, Sarah. Yes, yeah, she is. She'd do a, be a credit to your mob. You uh, knew who I was before you left London, I hope. Otherwise, I shall have to sprinkle more dandruff on my collar. Yes, I did know. You do realise why I can't get involved? Mm. Naturally, look, what I want to ask you is, look, have you got any idea how this could have been pulled off or, or who, who he could have been? Mm. Not an inkling, Jordan. Well, from a DI-6 man, that does give me a lot of confidence. Well, any one of them could have stolen it. I see you've got their files. A true blue bunch, solid as a row of Toby jugs. Hard to imagine a criminal instinct among them. But somebody's lapsed. Nobody usually does. Mm. My big problem is the money itself. It should have been handed over the night it was pinched. More than another 36 hours, and I'll have to tell my people to send on the same amount. They'll love that. I suppose your branch has its budget problems as well? Oh, not quite the same scale, though. Mm. Well, my party this end is growing dangerously impatient. It's not like an unpaid tailor's bill. It's liable to become very tricky. Oh, want my dabs too? Well, dandruff won't disguise you if you're left out, you know. Good morning. Good morning. Trust I haven't kept you waiting. Good God. Oh, I'm afraid Mr. Jordan's made everything a little dusty this morning. Do me a favour, will you? Burn these in the incinerator later. Oh, of course. <laughs> Uh, cultural relations would suddenly be cut off if certain great gentlemen in this city were able to match them up. <laughs> um, have you got a towel? Oh, yes, here. Yes. There's a clean one. Ah, oh, thank you. They've given you Ansel's old office. Yes. Jimmy Ansel, the commercial attaché. He's resigned the service. Gone home for the week to London to see people at the FO. Hand in his notice. House hunting, too, I believe. Look, there's something I want to uh, get cleared up now. Can you tell me... When actually did Jimmy Ansell leave the embassy? Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Let me think. Well, now you come to mention it, it must have been the night the money disappeared. The night the... Well, why didn't somebody tell me that? Hello, Jordan here. Look, I want to send a classified signal to London. Thank you. I haven't thought of Ansell being the thief, especially since he's due to come back and clear up. Uh, morning, Warmie. Oh, morning, Whitaker. Okay. Not content with your clot hopping spectacle last night, causing the greatest possible embarrassment in front of guests, you're at it again. Barging around this embassy as if you owned the place, and now getting on with this idiotic fingerprinting routine. Well, I am very sorry to upset you, sir. Thin skins, wars, and quarrels. I'll leave you chaffies to it. Would you mind, sir? Despite the ambassador's plea for cooperation, I'm damned if I like this. Have you taken his? No, but I will do. Routine in his case, I suppose, but not in mine. Mr. Whitaker, please, sir. When did Jimmy Ansell's plane leave? I have no idea. You're, you're not suspecting Jimmy Ansell of having taken the money. Why did he quit? I have no idea. Better ask him. He was due for retirement. In a couple of years, anyway. What's more, Inspector? Ansel was a very popular person, a loyal person, a hard-working man, and a great friend of mine. Perhaps you ought to know that he was down for an OBE. It's sheer nonsense to suspect him. Well, nonsense or not, sir, he left with his suitcases and with diplomatic immunity. Hello, Jordan here. Come on. Oh, fine. Uh, would you excuse me, please, sir?
Top priority, please. Game and set. Damn you. Taking advantage of a cripple like that. Some cripple. I only just beat you. Like another set. <coughs> oh, no thanks. Oh, I must give up cigars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank heavens for the sensible old aristocrat who built these courts. They missed a game of tennis every now and then. Wards off the claustrophobia. Especially at the moment. You mean with our police friends skulking around? To hell with him. I'm not like Whitaker. Jordan doesn't give me the jitters, Sarah, my love. He just gives me the creeps. Well, it's... Oh, thank you. It's hardly pleasant having a special branch man here, but uh, he is rather attractive. He's a muckraker. I know the type. If he did army service at all, it's bound to have been the military police. He has the right shape of head for it. <laughs> Cypress interrogation. Actually, I'm rather interested in your army service. Oh, really? Yes, you know the bit between Western Desert and Normandy. Where I traded my dancing career for an MC. You belong to a special unit that worked behind the enemy lines. What if I did? Well, I mean, amongst other things, you did learn how to open the most difficult safes. If you don't mind, Sarah, I think I'll go and change. It seems that soon I may not even have one leg to stand on. Corporal Doyle's the only one with the right idea around here. You can't think it's Dysart. Well, what do you think? I don't know. Neither do I. Tell me, what did he mean about Corporal Doyle? He's applied to buy himself out. I gather he got a local girl in trouble. Oh, poor Corporal Doyle. Poor girl. Did you come for a game? What? Actually, I lied. You see, I'm i am not really very good at tennis. I'll teach you. Well, Ian, I rather do like doing things I'm good at. Now, how about you and me having some dinner tonight? Well, I'd like to, Now, but... I promise you now, no, no boring police questions. Uh, dinner, and then, and then you show me the city. I can't. I have a date already. Oh. Colin Stroud's taking me to the ballet. Oh, you, you wouldn't prefer to take me dancing. I can't. I'm sorry. Well, there are other nights. Yes, other nights. Uh, I'm afraid I upset your partner. You're going to have to play alone. <laughs> I got your message and came straight over. Now, seriously, Mr... Uh, Superintendent. Uh, Superintendent Inman. Inman. Do you think I'd be here if I'd stolen money? And anyway, why the special branch? Well, there must be something unusual about it for it to involve you fellows. Mr Ansell, you're buying a new house. Where did you get the money from? I can't see that it's any business of yours where I got it from. Tainfield Lodge, Henley and Thames. Seven bed, three reception, two bath. Nice house. And you've agreed to pay the asking price of 17 and a half thousand? Yes, and we expect to be living there in a few weeks, Superintendent. At the moment, you own a small semi-detached house in Pinner, value at the most 6,000 pounds? I have savings. Yes, we checked with your bank. At the beginning of this week, you had just over 2,000 pounds in your account, and on Thursday, you deposited another eight and a half thousand in cash. What if I did? Then there's your journey home. You broke your flight, stopped over in Switzerland. Sir? To us, it seems possible you were changing a sum of money into pounds sterling. Now, the stolen money was in foreign currency. The money that was put into my bank was mine. It was not stolen. And you did not bring it in from abroad. It just materialized here and you refused to explain how, eh? Look, Superintendent, uh, you want me to fly back with you now? All right. But you're wasting your time trying to prove that I broke into that stronghold. Yes. Mr. Moxon to see you, sir. Ah, yes, show him in. And ask Morrissey to keep Mr. Ansel company next door. Mr. Ansel, would you excuse me? Would you mind waiting next door for a few minutes? Good morning. Good morning. Ansel still denying everything. Confident denier. Maybe he'll crack out there, but uh, he's a puzzle. When do you leave? In an hour. Do you good? You make it sound like a packaged holiday. Mm -hmm. Sorry to add to your load, but I wondered if you could take this along too. Sealed, eh? What's in it? Ten thousand pounds. You special tokens.
Limit. I'm sorry. I thought you'd gone to the ballet. Sorry. I forgot the tickets. They're in that top pocket. Oh. Oh, these. Yes. Are. Now what are you going to do? Slit the seams with a razor blade? Remove the lining? Don't forget the leather patches. You never know what might be hidden under those. Oh, late. Inspector Jordan was just going through my locker. Do you have permission for this? I don't need permission. More of your routine, I suppose. Searched my desk yet? Yes. Oh, I know what it's about, Sarah. You found out I was once in trouble with the police, right? I thought it was a possibility, sir, and now I know, don't I? Well, let me tell you something, Jordan. It happened five years ago when I was up at Oxford. I was charged with the theft of a car. Someone else was responsible. Halfway through my trial, they confessed, and I was acquitted. And another thing. I've signed more pages of the Official Secrets Act than you ever will. I'm interested in the theft, sir, not official secrets. I think you'll find you're wanted upstairs. And I'll have phoned my protest through before you get there. Enjoyed the ballet? Bloody cheek! This way, gentlemen. I seem to have walked into a situation that could hardly be called diplomatic. Well, sir, I had... Well, we'll talk about that later. I had no idea you were coming, sir. Yes, Ansel and I arrived a few minutes ago, just coming. We made inquiries, as you suggested. Your Excellency, may I present Superintendent Inman? Uh, how, how do you do, do, Superintendent? Now, I'm quite sure that all this can be explained quite satisfactorily. Apparently, I'm under suspicion, but uh, not under arrest. Well, I'm sorry about this. Excuse you... me, sir. Maybe you would take Mr. Ansel along to your room. My room, I think. Ah, yes, of course. I'll be there in a minute. This way, Mr. Ansel. If I could have a private... I think what... I'd better go and pacify Stroud. If only Inspector John had made some sort of official request to break into people's private lockers. Well, sometimes it is necessary for the law to take the law into its own hands. Yes, I suppose so. Well, Superintendent, can I offer you a drink? Uh, no, thank you, sir. I brought you this. Perhaps we'd better put it somewhere really safe this time. Now we've gone over the whole thing again. My answer is just the same. I did not steal the money. Oh, come along now. You could have left the reception and you could have gone down to the registry. All right, I could have, but you tell me how the blazes was I to force the strong room with a swizzle stick? And you still refuse to explain your stopover in Switzerland? Yes. Or the money you banked in England? Yes. All right, you can go. Just one thing. Your passport. Leave it here, would you? Thank you. No, he could never have broken into that strong room. Is your report up till now? Oh, yes. Um, it doesn't include the bit about my rude peasant behaviour. Yes. From what Whitaker tells me, you've been rubbing everybody up the wrong way. Well, if I am relegated to the role of a copper with hobnail boots, what do you expect? I expect you to do your job, Inspector. Yes, sir. What about the alarm system wiring? You checked on that? Mm, yes, I'm doing it now. Do you know it's all built into the walls? Find out if anybody could have tampered with it. What I mean is, cutting out the door beam for a while, yet still not breaking the circuit. Well, to do that, they would have to break into part of the walls. Well, make sure, Jordan, make sure. Is there a chart? Mm, oh, yes. Dig it out in the morning, we'll both have a look. Fine, sir. I'm having a, a nightcap with the ambassador. Thank you. Handcuffed Jimmy Ansel yet? Why, do you think we should? Well, you can't prove anything, can you? You know, sometimes I think you've got this place privately bugged. Jimmy didn't steal your money. I don't think he needed to. What do you mean? You're the detective. You find out. I'm sorry about last night. It's all right. Was the ballet good? Beautiful. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. I didn't. I think I'd rather have gone dancing with you.
aren't you on duty? Yes, but a friend of mine saw you at the airport last night. Now, what's this I hear about you resigning? Yes, it's quite correct. Towards the end of the month, after I've sorted out a few things. With your successor, the man who flew in with you. With me? My friend is positive he saw you both get into the same embassy car. Uh, you must mean the Queen's messenger. He also arrived last night. I'd forgotten about him. Oh, good morning. Mr. Jordan of the Ministry of Works. He's yeah. got the requisite plans. How are you? I'm awfully busy. I'm terribly busy. I must go. Oh, don't worry about the article. What I'm after is the real story. What real story? About what's going on here in this embassy. You see, I checked with my office in London and you're not listed at the Ministry of Works. In fact, they've never heard of you. I see. Well, that doesn't surprise me. I see. The shutters are up. Well, then, perhaps another message I received from London has something to do with it. The textile deal? What about it? Yesterday, a firm in Manchester announced that they'd signed a contract to supply this country with textile machinery worth roughly a quarter of a million. You'd know about that, Jimmy. Well, of course. I was instrumental in arranging the business. But then another firm let out a howl claiming they should have got the deal. They say they put in a lower tender. Any more to come? Is that why you're here, Inspector? <sighs> Mr. King, would you... Oh, well, don't bother with introductions. If there's one bloke a newspaper man can spot quicker than a diplomat, it's a policeman. Did you tell him, Ansel? Certainly not. So you took a bribe. Hmm? You took a backhander. And that's how you got the money. They persuaded me to swing the deal their way. They paid me eight and a half thousand when it was banked in Switzerland. You abused your position as commercial attaché of a British embassy? I'm sorry, Desmond. It was on the cards that I was going to be shifted from here, probably to some backwater. Imagine, at my age, trying to bump up sales in table mats and plastic toys. After 20 years, hoping to make other people millions. You know you'd have got an OBE. Oh, thank you. I had heard. But I decided that the service owed me slightly more. The Manchester firm was very insistent. I suppose they do this sort of thing all the time. And as my retirement was not far away, I thought, why not? I apologize to you, Superintendent. You look like a man who dearly wishes he could make an arrest. I'll be making a report, Mr. Ansell. Come along, James. There goes our prime suspect. Is this the wiring chart? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I'm doing it now. Red uh, for the strong room alarm system and the green for the cipher room warning beam. No sign of any tampering? No, huh? not yet. What about this air vent? Oh, yes, I thought about that, but they're, they're steel and they're all very firmly cemented in. Solid walls, yes. eh? Yes. What about this room? What, that one? No, here. Ah, oh, that one's the incinerator room and that is lined with metal plating. Tried the walls behind? Uh, not yet. Uh, key to incinerate room, please, Stan. It's out. Out? Out, Corporal. But... Who?
Well, what on earth's that contraption? It's very ingenious. You see, Sarah, if you distort the TV picture and you put that photograph up in front... Yes. ...and then you can work away behind it until your heart's content and no-one will know you're there. Oh, so that's how it was done. Sarah, I don't want you to tell a, a, a soul about this. No, of course not. Wait a minute. Um, why the cipher room? Um, it seems to me that you're on the right track, but it was the wrong door. Not a soul? No. I do wish you wouldn't look quite so hurt, I Tendall. won't say I'm pleased, sir. I don't like being deliberately led up the garden path. I understand. My dear fellow, it's much worse for me. All this chicanery, I was told, was necessary in order to get things moving. Come in. Well, Chief Inspector, what can I do for you? Uh, well, excuse me a moment, please, sir. sir. I'd like to have a few words. Good afternoon, Chief Inspector. Mr. Moxon. I gather you've been stirring things up here. Good man. Yes. Except all my investigations seem to be leading me to other conclusions, mm, Perhaps they're the right conclusion. It better be put in the picture. The sure, here, my ambassador. Very well. <clears throat> now, this contains blank paper brought out from London by Superintendent Inman. And this contains £10,000, which I have kept in my safe since removing it from the strong room on the night of the supposed theft. Special branch has been carrying out a double role unknown to either of us. There was no theft. You have been deceived in order to deceive. For some time now, we've known there's been a leakage of secrets from this embassy. Yes, one of my staff is a traitor. So we decided to stage a theft. Give us a pretext to stir it up a bit, to provoke our traitor into making a false move. Yeah. Well, I don't know who the traitor is. But I do think I've found out how he's working it. Mm, too simple by half. Someone must have pulled this dodge several times to judge by the number of leaks there have been. Mm. But we still haven't found out where the alarm system was stifled. There's only one way, you know, and that is by the door itself. Go on. Well, the traitor, whoever he is, he puts the photograph up, right, and he works behind it. And then he can bypass the warning system. He can link the photoelectric cells to the receptor cells. Now, all right, it's difficult, but uh, not impossible. Mm. Well, Stroud's in the clear. He has official access to the cipher room. No need to go to all that trouble. Which rules out one person, one out of a whole embassy staff. Mm. You know, there might be a way we can get him. Tell us, Jordan. Well, by now, everybody knows that this money is going to be paid to our agent over here. You know, your fellow. But the traitor, whoever he is, he doesn't know who our agent is. Well, thank God that information wasn't in the cipher room. Absolutely. But he'd like to know, so he can pass on his identification to the secret police in this country. So we arrange a fake collection yeah, here? Yeah, that's it, sir. With the black money. And we can let the pickup be known by the embassy staff. Might work. One bit. Let's say the tennis pavilion. Sunday, 9 p.m. Good. I'd like to substitute for our agent. So, if anyone makes a move out of the embassy at pickup time, he might well be our traitor. It could work. All right. All correct.
Who's that? What are you doing out here? Oh, it's you, Inspector George. I'll ask you a question, sir. What are you doing out here? Oh, okay. Get a breath of fresh air. Come with us. Hey, what's this all about? Oh, wait a minute. It didn't work. Nine o'clock's gone. No one left. It doesn't look like it. Excuse me, Mama. Now, look, what's all this about? It's nine o'clock. That's why you're here, isn't it? It's nine o'clock. What about it? You're not on the embassy staff, so someone there must have given you your instructions. We didn't realise there were two of you. Two of us? Now, listen to me. You two better be damn careful. Remember, I am a journalist. Tell us the name of the person who does the real inside work. Because this is the rendezvous with that person after you've seen who done the pickup, isn't that right? And they're going to be here pretty soon. I haven't the faintest idea what you two are talking about. We'll wait. If you wouldn't mind, sir. Oh, all right, if you want to play games. As I said, Jordan, clever girl, Sarah. Inspector Jordan. Sarah Landring, you know who I am. I'm taking you back to England, where you'll be charged under Section 1 of the Official Secrets Act. I must warn you that anything you say may be taken down. 